an Australian architect born on Kamilaroi land. And firstly, what we'd like to do is to acknowledge the Darug people of the Darug nation on whose land this project, the Western Sydney Airport, will stand. And we recognise their leadership past, present and emerging. Uh, this particular project will open in 2026 and it was subject to a world uh, competition that Cristiano and I decided that we would enter and take our two firms along in 2015. Um, that pairing was an unusual pairing that we started to understand how we might be able to work together across continents to work on a project such as this. So it really was a unique pairing um, that we established in 2005, uh, 15, and we've been working together ever since. Okay, uh, basically, I hope you can hear me. Um, the collaboration is a something that, as David mentioned, has been going on uh, for some time. And it really was about uh, a group of people coming together from different parts of the world and working through a specific issue that on one hand required uh, a lot of innovation and, and, and international expertise. On the other hand, was deeply rooted in the Australian context. So this kind of collaboration was really uh, a true dialogue, a, a learning process for both parties that happened between uh, London and Sydney uh, in the early stages, and then ultimately led to a great number of us spending a lot of time in Sydney. It was very much also kind of a family affair. As you can see, the teams really developed a close and a collegial relationship, spending time together, working together. And that really set the scene for uh, really a lot of uh, design ideas to be explored. Um, next. One of the things that we established with this particular project as uh, Sydney's second airport was the first naming of it. It was very proudly conceived as Western Sydney's first airport. Sydney, as many of you might know, is a city that has around about 5 million people in its population at the moment. It has a basin, a uh, physical basin that's limited by the Hawkesbury River to the north, the Blue Mountains to the south, and what's called the Royal National Park to the, uh, to the south and edge of that. This new airport was going to serve really the western part of the city. If Australia is a multicultural country, Sydney is probably the most multicultural city and of Sydney's area, the western part of Sydney is most multicultural. It is going to be the heart of the new western parkland city. So what Sydney is embarking on a process of establishing a three CBD situation, the Harbour CBD, the Greater Parramatta CBD and the airport, which is going to be the focus of the Western Sydney New Parkland CBD. So to understand that geography, the new Western Sydney Airport is some 45 to 50 kilometres away from the existing CBD itself. What we were drafted with as an initial design was to understand um, a master plan that, as I mentioned, the airport project was looking to open in 2026. The idea of that is that that will be a 10 million passenger master plan that then has a structure that can grow over the years towards uh, 2064 with 82 million passengers. So our role was to look at, at making this transition as much and as smooth as possible in the growth of this airport project. In doing this, what we also did, which was quite interesting, is to establish a series of contacts and connections with other people in Western Sydney. So we worked in our competition, which we thought was quite a unique situation with the Architecture School of the Western Sydney University. And we established a series of broader connections as well too, as part of our, of our bid. It became a very unique part of our bid, which differentiated us as well too. So the context and the site analysis of many of you who have been to Australia, you understand the uniqueness. Our design focus very much was created with the passenger and the customer at its heart. We wanted to create a design that was absolutely unmistakably Australian, not uh, Sydney's second airport, as I mentioned, but Western Sydney's airport, a gateway to Australia and recognising the Indigenous Australia and the process of reconciliation. We were designing with customer centric principles and the idea of connecting land, place and people, the emotional connection to community, passengers and employees. When we first started to work with Zaha's office, we started to talk about what Australia was and what in fact Sydney was as well too. And this image became quite a key image 
in the process of us learning about the place to establish the design. This idea of the sunken valley and this unique topography that exists to the west of the city of Sydney. In the early part of the project, uh, one Saturday morning, I took Cristiano and a couple of his colleagues for a drive out to site, as, as you do always. And one of the things, and I thought this day in a particular, was a pretty ordinary sort of a day for a Sydney day. The guys from London were absolutely struck with the volume of the sky and the quality of the light. And these particular images that are not great images, but they were taken on this day and they've got power lines and things like that in them. But they're really honest images of the guys from London coming out here were so, uh, I guess, positioned by the nature and the colour of the blue Australian light and the way that shade and shadow worked its way through the unique eucalyptus trees. Yep. Uh, David, do you mind to press uh, under window, put full screen so that we see the whole image? Because I realize this is, uh, or whoever's driving this, because it's a PDF and so we don't see the full image. Okay, all right, you talk and I'll try and do that. Yeah, so if you go back one, basically I think one of the important things, uh, sorry, do you mind to go back one image? Um, one thing that was important to us, as David mentioned, was to have a genuine and unfettered experience of the landscape. Us being uh, uh, new to Australia and getting to know uh, uh, particularly not just Australia and Sydney in the kind of uh, conventional sense of uh, the Harbour City and the West and the Harbour Bridge and the Opera House and so on. This was an entirely new experience of, thank you, of the Australian bush. And one thing that strike us also um, was the interplay of light and shadow and the sense of scale and verticality provided by these trees that punctuated, if you like, the horizontality of uh, the landscape. And we really very much wanted to capture this together with the drama of the adjacent Blue Mountains uh, combined with the Cumberland Plain, really capture this as one of the essence of the project not just as a way of celebrating the landscape, but also its heritage and its many, many layers of, of, layers of cultural development. Next. Sorry, I don't know if I can drive. Sorry, next, next uh, page, whoever's driving. Yep, it's on the next page. Um, I see, sorry, I still see the trees here. Uh, I think there's a, Right, there we go. So there's a bit of delay, um, no problem. So one of the things again here was trying to capture the essence of some of the elements that we um, witness, I think with fresh eyes uh, and a certain level of innocence, if you like. One of the great things that happened early on on this project is with that those of us who are coming to it from London and either not, never having been to Australia, only having spent limited amount of time in Australia was a complete indoctrination into what Australia was has become and what it is becoming today and the sensitivities that exist in this particular terrain. And this is something that I think was one of the great successes of the partnership that we established between ZHA and Cox. And one of the things that came out of this was this idea of this kind of horizontal flowing building, uh, this idea of using filtered light uh, to provide a sense of memory of that forest, but also using it as a device to guide people through the building and begin to therefore modulate the space with a kind of a framework that would create this kind of almost inverted landscape on the ceiling while allowing the building inside to take the necessary uh, layout and the nexus necessary capability to change over time. One of the most important things about contemporary airports that they continuously change as rules and regulations and transport needs change. And we wanted to create a flexible infrastructure that would retain its identity uh, over its lifespan, which might be 50, 70, maybe more years. Yep. Next. One of the things that we tried to work through was an understanding of Australia, both its history and indeed where it was heading. And you can see from this collection of images here that we were focused certainly on the indigeneity of Australia and what does that mean and what can we learn from that I mentioned earlier the multicultural and our future. Um, the, the nature of the community of Western Sydney is indeed very diverse. And when the settlements were carried out here some 250 years ago, images like the bottom right hand side, buildings from another land were bought here and actually just placed in Australia. And what we've been doing ever since is really trying to learn and understand 
how to exist in this particular climate, the veranda being one of those elements as well. The most defining feature of Australia in many respects in our architecture is indeed the landscape. So what we looked to do as we were starting to establish our dialogue of materiality was to not achieve a palette that perhaps spoke of what most people might think of as being Sydney and Australia. What we look to achieve here with our materials on the left was Western Sydney, a more earthen, a more rooted exposure. And then on the right hand side was the potential then to actually use indigenous elements in a coda that might work throughout the way we find ourselves moving through the building. So as we established our overall master plan, the macro linkages we looked for, so we didn't want the airport to be an impact on the site itself. We wanted to establish an urban framework, as I mentioned, this new center of a new CBD and a healing, if you like, of a place here, a reconciliation, also creating jobs for the new economy. So this new CBD had a fine urban grain, the landscape would be primary, and we established in the bottom right hand side through there, the idea that at the center of the airport itself, this, the new CBD would be the Australian bush. Christiano? Yeah, so the basically the project uh, is the largest federal government project in Australia today, as I'm sure you know. Um, ultimate, its ultimate expression will be everything you see here, which is a very large airport on two runways in parallel, catering for 82 million passengers. Just to give you roughly a size of what that means, you, if you take um, multiply that typically by 10,000, that will be somewhere around 800,000 square meters of construction. Um, it starts with an initial terminal and grows into four terminals. And part of this is about a celebration of a weave, of a kind of an urban weave, as we call it, that feeds and weaves in landscape uh, with built form. Uh, what you see here is basically a conceptual image of landscape, built form, and different transport vectors creating a kind of an abstract landscape. And this became a sort of a source of inspiration of how this kind of might manifest itself in Western Sydney. Um, next. Yeah, so when we graph that onto what a potential airport might look like within the framework of what the client is off asking us to do, we end up basically again with this kind of weave that you just saw uh, grafted into there. And this now leads you to have sort of the, the, the fabric or the texture of what ultimately a full build, air, full, full build airport might be. And what that means is that um, the first terminal is really part of a continuous growth and weave. It's not one formal building, it's a series of buildings that create this kind of uh, uh, new CPD that David was talking about. Equally important to this is the aspect of uh, sustainability and creating uh, a, a solution that uh, is envisaging a kind of a zero net zero carbon um, uh, characteristic to it. So effectively working with water which is quite scarce there, working uh, with uh, uh, energy uh, and passive uh, design, and ultimately using those elements to then create the core elements that would attract not just travelers and workers who need to uh, go there, but also people from the surrounding landscape that allow us to uh, create a new part of the city. Next. Conscious of time. And so when we started the project, it's interesting how some of these sort of smaller sketches that we established actually, in fact, became uh, a recognition of place, landscape and humility. What we were looking to try and achieve was an essence of Australia in our particular architecture. That was built up in many complex levels, which Cristiano is now going to talk through. Yep. Uh, next. So what you see here now are some of the images uh, that came out of this process. Uh, we just jumped over one, which was uh, the view of, of the terminal itself. Again, with that low, this kind of ceiling uh, and uh, inverted ceiling and light roof floating above effectively a complex level of departures uh, and arrivals, um, including in, in, in the middle of it, a space that would bring the whole terminal together. Um, so the, arc, this, the terminal is effectively organized on three different uh, levels uh, originally. So we have uh, two different function levels, arrivals, departures with a service level in the middle and this kind of roof floating above. And this idea is then that you can have the distribution of services 
and functionality, which includes baggage system and uh, as well as conventional uh, building systems across the building without interfering with the functions. These are then perforated or eaten out if you like by other negative volumes. So the veranda on the air side in the middle, this idea of a double height space called the Great Australian Light that would allow us to bring natural daylight into a large volume into the heart of the building. And finally then another space that um, is called Carson Country, which is really about uh, borrowing for the traditional Aboriginal lore of moving from one region to another. And that ultimately creates a complete uh, construct for the project, which um, has remained the theme of the building throughout its evolution during the reference design period. So ultimately what you are, what you are uh, left with then is a highly functional airport that is enshrouded with a common kind of architectural uh, uh, device, which is this continuing roof. And at the same time is organized with a series of sequenced uh, um, zones that uh, have to do with passenger processing and functionality in the terminal, but at the same time kind of echo traditional um, Australian um, uh, elements such as the veranda, which David described in detail before, also this idea of the great Australian light celebrating the landscape, bringing light in, this idea of an ochre gathering, which is kind of uh, a space for uh, uh, getting together, for dining and so on. And then finally crossing country out of the airport, out of Australia, then onto an aircraft and into a new destination. So there's a series of uh, um, moments and series of elements throughout the building that are traversed by travelers, both arriving and departing. Um, next. Yeah, another important thing I'll just touch on is flexibility and expandability. Uh, one of the important things here is that a terminal has to be able to grow. And that's something, again, that we included in the design through a series by not creating one single monumental building, but actually allowing it to be an assemblage of repetitive elements where we keep on adding some of these bays uh, towards the left and allowing the terminal to grow. Um, so the terminal, we'll just quickly flick through this. This is the ground level, which is really to do with the baggage reclaim arrivals. You see in pink, the baggage system above that. Next. Um, with different flows through it, depending if you're arriving or departing internationally. Um, we have a service level in the middle, which feeds both above and below within the terminal, including the baggage system. Next. And then terminal flows at that level, uh, which have to do with transfers and international arrivals next. And finally, on the top level, we have departures. So you come up into uh, a common departure space. You have a lot of retail uh, shopping, which is in pink, and that creates this kind of pathways all the way to the piers and then to the gates. Again, you see this uh, the central space in the middle, that bar is the great Australian light, which provides a visual connection and a spatial connection between our levels and finally um, lounges on the level above. So it's a three-dimensional kind of stack building with vertical penetrations that allow you then to have specific areas of the building de dedicated in this case to different parts of retail and services and other offerings, but at the same time create an exciting space that is um, you know, used by all travelers as well as the people actually working here. A lot of work on retail planning. Obviously, uh, the retail is important within an airport because it's one of the major elements for generating revenue. This is something that we have to work into the functionality of the airport. These images here give you a little bit of an understanding of the condition of the building. This is the ground plane with the arrivals and the baggage system behind. It's towards the air side. Next. Um, and you see also in front there is now this overhang, this uh, plaza in front of the building for drop-offs and pickups moving through the building then the retail and departure areas on the upper level. Next. And so we established a series of key spaces in here as you enter the building, the grand veranda, as you move through the building, the idea of the great Australian light from an upper level and then further from a lower level. And then as Cristiano had mentioned, as you leave the building, the idea of crossing country. We've used the interpretation of indigenous uh, facilities and artwork as part of the wayfinding throughout. And really what we're looking for is that expression of Western Sydney in all of the architectural maneuvers that we've made. Um, as David mentioned before, we also worked with um, 
uh, artists. We also worked with uh, uh, integrating that with wave finding. Um, the overall system of the building is a highly integrated technical solution that allows for maximum usage of the space with uh, the required flexibility. And ultimately also looking at construction solutions that allow us to leverage the local construction market, not just in Sydney, but in Western Sydney itself and thereby create a building that, again, is highly sustainable because it also stimulates and supports the local economy and um, the national supply chain within Australia. So these solutions, we believe, have produced a robust set of principles um, that are now being taken forward. Uh, we are currently um, going through a tender process uh, for construction uh, with a number of different contractors and um, these principles here of the design will be taken forward and used then to um, basically develop the design further from the reference design that it currently is to the final construction design. So here again, you see an image of uh, what the terminal will be in terms of the construction solutions developed for it. The idea of a porous ventilated facade that takes advantage of the local climate and local um, environmental conditions. Equally important then is of course, a lot of detailing that has to do with passive solar shading, making sure that each facade of the building is tuned to its uh, unique orientation to the sun. Um, another important thing is maintenance. Uh, these are all things that go in part and parcel with the functionality of the airport. You have to have maintenance in such a way that it doesn't interfere with a you know 24 seven operations. Um, David mentioned before the aspect of lighting, bringing in natural daylight, echoing the um, local landscape and the local kind of qualitative uh, conditions that we described very early, early on in the photographs. Um, we have an important uh, sustainability narrative, which of course is about leveraging and playing to the, uh, the key elements of the environmental conditions in Western Sydney and creating as open and porous a building as possible that is as close to net carbon zero as can be, sustainable and pleasant uh, as 365 days a year, both for arriving as well as departing passengers. So this need to bring in daylight through. Um, it's interesting to, in conclusion, to say that the client here is very, very considerate about this particular aspect of sustainability. They have even a climate change team that looks at future development of climate conditions into the future. Um, the same goes in terms of sustainability on technical develops, such as a baggage system that can easily be expanded as the airport grows. And at the same time, does not interfere with the quality of the architecture and the spatial experience. So, you know, the entire project is very much driven by, um, with the traveler and the customer at heart uh, as the, per the client's requirements. So this, I would say, sort of concludes our presentation. David, I don't know if you want anything else. I'm conscious of time, but uh, we look forward to seeing you travel through this airport, uh, hopefully from, you know, from Bangladesh in, in 2026. So the, the intentions were that the project establishes the origins of the new Western Parkland city. Um, our intention really, I guess, is to create drama, logic, and the delivery of how we make this project happen. The look and the feel of warmth and honesty with local materials. Um, simple elements in a poetic assemblage. Now design is created with the passenger and the customer at its heart. The idea is to connect the land, create place and celebrate the people. Thank you.